my sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teachings to the crowd, Jesus said, Beware. Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in the synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They'll receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowds put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasure. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, she has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood, the gospel of the Lord. First, I just want to give praise and honor to God. Uh, let's give God a hand clap of praise. I love coming to this Catholic kingdom in North Philadelphia, as Father Thorne describes it. Uh, this place of deep faith. Um, and it is an honor to be invited by Father Thorne. You have an awesome pastor. Uh, I, I want to encourage you to pray for him daily as he leads not only this parish and not only the students at Newman University but he is a model of faith and a prophetic voice in all of Philadelphia and in all of black Catholics throughout the country. This week, this month, has been difficult. In so many ways, in November, I see you like we have a book of the dead. And then we read and hear about senseless violence. So I want you to join me as we begin. I moaned and I moaned, I moaned all night long. I moaned and I moaned a 
until I found the Lord. My soul just couldn't be contented, just couldn't be contented, just couldn't be contented until I found the Lord. I prayed, I prayed, and I prayed, I prayed. I prayed all night long. I prayed and I prayed until I found the Lord. My soul just couldn't be contented. Just couldn't be contented. Just couldn't be contented, be contented until I found. Senseless violence. The 11 people killed in California. How can we not moan when we see racism? How can we not moan when we elect people to represent us and they're bought out by the NRA? And we all know that not all gun violence will stop. but we still need to do what is right, and we're not doing it. So I moan every time. And today, God's word, let's hear for God's word. First of all, I almost forgot this. I should never forget this. We should never forget this. Do we have any veterans in the house? Please raise your hand if we have. Let's hear it for our veterans. <laughs> Praise God. People who are willing for you and me to put their lives at danger to protect our freedoms. And you know, today, I love God's Word. God's Word is a living Word. Elijah, I'm not Elijah, the, the first king with the, the, the uh, Elijah, uh, is speaking to us as is Mark's gospel that's talking about a widow. Do we have any widows or widowers in here? All right, this word is for you. Do we have any single parents in here? This word is for you. Do we have any grandparents taking care of their grandchildren? This word is for you. Do we have anybody in here is unemployed or underemployed, that's probably, we can all raise our hands to that, this word is for us. You see, yes, it was written 3,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago, but it has a message because it's a living word. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's a living word. And, 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 and God is talking to us in both readings about our life situation. And so we can look at the world out there and, and, and we can pull our hair out if you have any. <laughs> but we got to understand that we have a God who loves us. We have a God 
place our feet on solid ground. And so we might have some moaning and groaning, but we also have the word of God. Amen? And so let's this morning turn to that eternal hope and sing out, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Help me out, choir. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. This word is food for our dinner. And today, in Elijah, in, in, in 1 Kings, the prophet Elijah comes to Zareth. And there is a lady there at her wit's end. I'm sure that she had moaned and groan and saw no way out but there was something about Elijah this lady was a poor widow she was a single parent she had one son and she loved him deeply and she was going to prepare their last meal you see there was a great drought there was nothing to eat and what a great Elijah calls out and says, bring me a glass of water. And when I was praying about this this week, both, both widows, Mark's widow also, I said to myself, would I have been so kind? And, and she takes Elijah glass of water. She doesn't have Perrier and all that stuff. She just takes them a glass of water. And Elijah then says, well, make me something to eat. And she tells him, I don't have anything other than this little jar of oil and this little sack, a little bag of, of grain. I'm going to prepare something for my son. It's going to be our last meal. What do you do when you feel you have nothing left? And Elijah tells her then, prepare something, prepare a cake for me first. Hello. Prepare a cake for me first. And then make something for yourself and your son. I think this widow understood that this is a man of God. Because Elijah tells her, the Lord, the God of Israel, assures you that your jar of oil that was almost run out and your little bit of flour will not run out until you see rain. It was a year later. A thousand meals, because you can't tell me you have a teenage son and you feed him just a cake once a day. And, 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 and so she goes and does. And what does she do? She trusts in the Lord. Turn to the 
the person next to you and say, you got to trust in the Lord. And you see now, let, let, and, and praise God. See, God has brought us a mighty long way. Amen. Anybody here know that God has brought them a mighty long way? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? We got to trust in the Lord. Because if we're just trusting on what I have and I can do, we're not going to get anywhere. We're going to run out. And so now you have Mark's gospel. And again, you have a poor widow. And all these folk are coming in and putting in lots of money in the treasury. In a few small coins, a few cents. And he gives us an example. He says to his disciples, she gave more than anybody else because she gave from her need. See, she trusted. She probably had been there before. She understood that it was God who brought her this far by faith. And and so she took the little bit that she had and she gave it to the Lord. I've been blessed many times to go to Africa. And one of the things that blows me away is that I see people who by American standards would have nothing, but they're willing to share because they trust in the Lord. And their joy can never be taken away. And so we have two women, two women of faith who are teaching us a lesson. Because my guess is that sometimes we wonder if we'll have enough. Amen, church? Sometimes we think, well, let somebody else do it. Let some rich person take care of that. But God wants us to give what we have. He wants us to trust in the Lord. How many people here want to trust in the Lord? All right. Then let's sing it. I will trust. In the Lord I will trust, in the Lord I will trust, in the Lord at all times. I will trust in the Lord, I will trust. In the Lord I will trust in the Lord till I die. I want all the women to get up. I want all the women to stand and look at the, their brothers and say, Brother, will you trust in the Lord? Brother, will you trust in the Lord? Just the women right now. Brother, will you trust? They're singing to you. Lord at all times, brother will you trust in the Lord, brother will you trust in the Lord, brother will you trust in the Lord till you die. Now the women may be seated, the men stand up and we'll sing. Sister, will you trust in the Lord? Sister, will you trust in the Lord? Sister, will you trust in the Lord at all times? Sister, will you trust in the Lord? Sister, will you trust? In the Lord, sister, will you trust in the Lord till you die? And so we hear.
hear this powerful story of two women of faith. And truth be told, men, we learn a lot from women of faith. We may not give them the roles in the church that they deserve, but we learn so much about faith from our mothers and our mother figures. And these two women of faith who don't have a whole lot, they show us. You have the widow of Zareph and, and so for a year, over a thousand meals later, God took care of her. You see, if God is for us, who can be against us? And we look at the widow in the temple, understanding that she has to put God first in her life. Turn to the person next to you and say, we got to put God first. And that's so counter-cultural. It's, it's understanding who we are and whose we are. It's understanding that sometimes oh, we might just be holding on. I mean, we can look Stacey Abrams, who deserved the election in Georgia, went against an attorney general who did voter suppression and had President Trump call her a loser. My, my, my. And we could say, Lord, help me to hold out. Say that with me, church. Lord, help me to hold out. We, we, we can look at Maxine Walter, Waters, notice, uh, uh, the most prophetic voice in Congress. And the president challenged, said, oh, she doesn't know anything. She's wise beyond limits. And, and when we see that criticism, we can't help but say, Lord, help me to hold out. We, we, we can look at the 11 deaths in California. Now get this, I'm going to put a couple things together here. It, it just made me think, by a white man. We can think back to Las Vegas a little over a year ago. By a white man. We can look at the Tree of Life Synagogue with the hate by a white man. We can look at the killings in Kentucky of a person who tried to get into a black church to shoot it up, it was locked, and went in and shot the first two people of African descent by a white man. We can look at the 14 pipe bombs sent around and with hate all over his van by a white man. Now, these were nuts. <laughs> but notice how we think, we don't look and say, how about these hate groups? How about these white nationalist groups? Right. How, about, how about our rhetoric that, 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 that and, and, but I'm wondering, just wondering, if these incidents happened by a black man, where and what would we be saying as a nation? Would it just be a bunch of nuts? I don't think so. Lord, help me to hold out. You know, we can look, and, and, and we've experienced this in the church. The Pennsylvania Grand Jury report, a thousand children or 300 priests Lord help me to hold out we can read about Cardinal McCarrick or Bishop Timlin or any of the bishops who were part of the cover up 
who say they're going to be shepherds of their sheep and meanwhile send their lambs to wolves. Well, I didn't come to the Catholic Church because of any cardinal or bishop. I came because of Jesus Christ. something and, and there's nothing we can do and we just have to say Lord help me to hold out there are so many issues maybe it's it's something physical it might be a medical issue it might be a, a, a financial issue and at times like that we just have to say Lord help me to hold out that's what these two widows did and that's why we're gonna sing this song now Lord help me to hold out until my change has come. That's right. Lord, help me to hold out. That's what the widows did. Until my change has come. And the verse goes, my way may not be easy. You never said it would be. But when it gets dark, can't see my way, you told me to put my trust in thee. Amen. That's what we got to do. That's what these women of faith did. And so turn to the person next to you and say, we're going through things. Going through things. I, I don't know if it's personal, national, but we're going through things. But we got to look at a God who loves us. Amen? Amen? We got to look at the fact that God woke us up this morning. Amen? We got to look at the fact that God called us his children. Amen? We got to look at how far God has brought us by faith. Amen, church? We got to look at all that God has done for us, how he's opened doors and windows and picked us up when we were down. Oh, we, we got to look at the blessings in your life. You got to look at this parish's faith community that supports you. Amen. God is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Got to look 
at the word that will always lift us up and encourage us. And got to look at what we celebrate. It's God's love. It's God's, this is my body. God loved us so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. We got to celebrate that. We got to celebrate that God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Amen, church? And then he said, this is my blood, which will be given up for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. And one thing we all know, if we're truthful to ourselves, is we're sinners. Amen? Amen. And God loves us and takes away. And so, yes, 3,000 years ago, we see the widow of Zarephath. 2,000 years ago, we see the widow coming into the synagogue, the temple. And now we come to pray. And we may be going through things. Life may be rough. Turn to the person next to you and say, God is on our side. What are we going to give to Jesus? What are we going to give to Jesus? Is it going to be surplus? Or are we going to give our all? I don't know about you, but my heart's crying out. Help me out. All to Jesus. I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. Let's sing this loud. I surrender all. That's what the widows did. That's what God's word is calling us to do. (coughs) Doesn't matter what we have. God will see us through. He'll let us touch people. To Jesus. I surrender. So today, as we hear three of two widows, as we hear Aaron's story, let's each of us surrender all to Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.